Hi, I'm Adam and I'm the Exhibitions Manager here at Philadelphia's Magic Gardens. I'm here to share a little bit of information about um, some aspects of the Magic Gardens. Um, today i like to talk a little bit about uh, Isaiah's changing mosaic process. Um, over the trial of uh, 50 years, uh, he has uh, developed his process through trial and error. Um, he started mosaicing in the late 60s when he and his wife Julia moved to 4th and South. Uh, there he started mosaicing his bathroom and then started to bleed out into the rest of the parts of his house and then out into the neighboring streets. Uh, this is a way of him of nesting. Uh, he also had a lot of opportunity to do all of that during the what we call the South Street Renaissance, this huge renovation, this revitalization of uh, the South Philadelphia neighborhood in the South Street area. Um, but the mosaics that you see today are vastly different than when he first started. Um, a lot of his work was inspired by his first um, muse. Uh, his name is Clarence Schmidt. Uh, Isaiah met Clarence up in Woodstock, New York, uh, when Isaiah was 19 years old. Uh, that was his first experience uh, seeing a, what we call an art environment, which is a space that is made by one person. It is an entire work of art that surrounds the viewer. Um, so what Clarence used to do when he embellished his walls, um, he used a lot of tar and he used a lot of found materials. So Isaiah started replicating that type of um, work. Um, so in the beginning of his mosaicing process, um, we are here at 610 South 10th Street, a neighboring property next to the Magic Gardens. Um, and there is some old mosaics here um, that I can show you. Uh, in front of this door, for example, if you look up here, you can see um, an old mosaic and process by Isaiah trying to figure things out. Things are a lot more, um, I guess, haphazard and experimental. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of found materials like buttons. There are some tiles, uh, but he did actually use tar at first. Um, he then moved to cement, um, which was kind of colorless at the time. Um, he also used uh, large broken pieces of mirror. Um, there are also uh, pieces that don't really showcase a specific design. It was just pure embellishment. You can see that up and down this wall over here. It wasn't until later when he started to develop his concept of applying color and applying uh, different designs uh, in his mosaicing technique. So in the same building on the same property, you'll be seeing um, a mosaic on the ground that he did much later. Um, you'll be seeing uh, Isaiah's portrait, for example, on the ground right over here. So you can see his newer style. He started incorporating uh, different uh, colors into his mosaic and grout. Uh, which he mixed with white Portland cement, some white sand, some water, and uh, pure pigment that he mixed together and it leaves kind of like this permanent coloring stain. Um, he also uses mirror in a different way. Uh, you can see unlike the mirror that's in front of this door, which is just broken into different pieces, the mirror that's on the floor is specifically cut to outline. Uh, drawing, uh, which then he's able to re-reference um, by using another color of acrylic paint when everything is all um, when everything is all done. Um, then he uses broken tile to fill in all the empty space, which then afterwards is reinforced with the colored grout, which he applies in between the tiles, smoothing it over. Um, and you can so that's basically his uh, process, uh, more or less. Um, things change, continuously change over time. Um, but these are the two drastic differences that you'll be seeing um, throughout the neighboring murals throughout the South Street area, South Philadelphia area, and um, over time at the Magic Gardens. Um, until next time, have a good one, and uh, hope to see you soon. Be safe.